I had finished with university and uh, I did social sciences. And the idea then was to, from the social sciences, I study economics, politics, and things like that. I wanted to go and run my own business in financial services, but I had no idea what it would be. So I ended up uh, doing some of the other things that interested me at first. So I, I explored a uh, military career and went into Sandhurst and started training there, met a few people, well, a lot of individuals uh, that became friends. And then that's, I didn't take it all the way down to the officer career uh, and I went into retail. And from there I was able to develop all the way up to becoming a, on the doors of becoming a retail operations director. Uh, I was running 20 stores and 120 staff uh, right across London, right up until into the north of England, uh, running all of those. And it was exhilarating, but it also felt a little stressful, like I was departing more and more from what my dream actually was. So I reflected on it and decided that I would go back to what my original uh, ambition was, which was to run a business in financial services. So I started doing some exploration, narrowing down the field of options, and went into St. James's Place as a result of some recommendations that I, I had come across with friends. And it, it turned out that my very first uh, incursion into that was in 2007 when SJP was running a pilot program. But unbeknownst to me, uh, I thought it was the original uh, academy, but it was just a pilot. And uh, I decided that what I would do was, when I was rejected from the pilot, uh, because they had already hit their numbers, I decided that what I would do is go into financial services proper and went into Lloyd's. And there I was developing my career as a financial services individual. And then, lo and behold, I got in touch with another friend who had just left, who had left Sanders and had gotten on to the pilot program with SJP. And that individual explained to me that I didn't need to be a financial services advisor or anything along those lines, that SJP would still accept me without the experience. And he made the necessary introductions. And that's how my career with SJP started in 2012. I was part of the third cohort in that year. And since then, I've gone on to become, well, I guess, I don't know if this is too early to say, but uh, I'm knocking on the door of becoming a senior partner. So it's been a, a successful career since I started off with the Academy in 2012. It was very challenging because uh, you had to start from scratch and you would be in, you were in a position where uh, there, was no, there was no way to earn any money. So they did provide financial support, but you were in a position where there was no way to earn any money yourself. So you were earning quite well beforehand and then you had to start off with virtually zero. But the structure was incredible um, at that point in time. I'd never seen anything like it. They were able to get me through the exams in six months and it was all about compliance, all about how to set up, run your business. They gave me a mentor and we started off that way. So it was uh, very, very well structured, I felt. I did not get off to a successful start. But, uh, for me, I was proud of the fact that I was able to get some clients, but it was not enough to be able to uh, feed a family. Uh, I had just had a baby boy, we'd just taken on a mortgage, and I was kind of confident in my ability, so I'd convinced my wife to join me in the practice and leave her own job. So there was virtually no income coming in, and it was, uh, it was a dark time, uh, those early years, a very dark time. St. James's Place decided that, listen, uh, it would probably be a good idea for you to consider other options because I was convinced that I could do it on my own and I wanted to build a business on my own. But St. James's Place brought me in and said, listen, this, you may want to reconsider your options because you may not last uh, long enough to do it all on your own. So they put me in touch with a couple of other practices and I was still reluctant. I was still hesitant because the dream was to set up your own business and, and grow your own business. So I was very reluctant. But uh, I listened to their advice and, and then I, I went with a practice and it was the best thing that I ever did. What I found in hindsight was the structure around the academy is all around, was all around compliance and doing things the right way, getting the exams right, getting your structure right in terms of doing things the way it should be done. But it wasn't commercial. So when I went into a practice, it was very commercial. It was all about how you use the tools that were provided by, to you by the academy 
to create a business, to get a going concern. And that's, that's what I really benefited from. So I know now uh, that the SAP Academy is completely different from the way it used to be when I first started. Because when I first started, that was 10 years ago now. And they were also developing their program, which they continue to continuously develop and improve. So then my program was six months long. And I thought it was an eternity. But now it's 18 months long. And essentially what that does is it covers all of the training, all of the compliance, and it goes on to cover the commercial aspect, which was what was missing from my initial foray into the academy. And, uh, and they also helped me at the outset, so when they realized that after six months and I am trying to do my own business, it wasn't quite working, they helped me um, get set up with uh, a practice. And now they're doing that almost as a matter of course. So I think they, they've moved ahead in leaps and bounds and it's, uh, it's, it's very supportive from cradle to, I don't want to use cradle to grave, but from cradle to establishing your business. Yeah, so I had conversations with a number of people. I had conversations with the practice themselves, and I also had conversations with the city location. And uh, so conversation with city location, you have the conversation with the head of location, Orion, who now says, okay, these things are possible, and I'll put you in touch with the BDM, or PDM, Personal Development Manager, Chris West, who would be uh, your point of contact. Then I met with Chris West, Chris West. We had a great conversation around the goals, the objectives, what it is I'd like to do with this brand that I was looking to develop. And he absorbed it all and started pointing me in the right direction. And one of the first people he introduced me to was Gail um, over at SJP Marketing. I think I described the process with Gail as being very interactive. Uh, Gail is very, I, I think she's got a vibrant personality. And what she does is she enables you to engage and think differently. She doesn't instruct you as to what to do. She gives you options. And she says, okay, if I were you, I would do this. But it's not uh, something that's set in stone. She gives you various options of various practices of how they did things. And then you can now use all of those ideas to develop your own. And I think that is a, is, is a better way to engage. And I, I found the whole process with her very enlightening as to how to build a brand and the, the utilization of a brand uh, within uh, a business. My biggest challenge with developing the brand really has been time. So at the same time as developing the brand, <clears throat> I'm looking to expand the business and I'm also looking to make sure that the, the business, well, grows, make sure that uh, we're able to deliver customer service to our existing clients and deliver it at a very high level. So I meet with my clients multiple times a year, not twice, not once, multiple times a year to ensure that we're we're growing and I'm servicing all of them. Uh, and that is what has taken me away from being able to develop the brand at the speed and to the degree that I, that I would like. My relationship with my personal development manager, it, I think is, is the best. I think he's the best thing uh, that I've, I've uh, come across in St. James Place because he's introduced me to people like Gail. He's introduced me to people in, in the human resources that help me with the business. So he's been pretty, and he's also been a sounding board all of the difficulties that I've had um, in St. James Place. So I'm thinking this, it's, uh, if everybody could have someone like that, <laughs> you couldn't want for anything else in St. James Place, I think. So I am seeing tangible results from the, the pickup and solidity of the business because Gail is still very much part and parcel of what it is I'm doing. So right now I'm trying to see if I can develop the marketing of the brand a little bit more. We're doing a little bit more work on LinkedIn and it's, it's always Gail we go to. Uh, so she, uh, th there's a marketing portal in St. James Place that uh, hand on heart I, I should really have known about, but I didn't. And if it wasn't for Gail guiding and saying, look, there's also this set of resources that you could utilize, I wouldn't have known that SJP had those resources. So I think someone like Gail in, I don't want to say in your back pocket, but at your side is, is, is crucial. So in terms of running your own business, I think the challenge that we would all have is the fact that you would get head down and forget that there's a possibility that you get help from anywhere else. So you're focused on trying to get it up and running. And then if you don't raise your head, speak to peers, colleagues, and people like your PDM, then you're not ever directed to the resources that already exist that could make your life easier. 
And that's, and that's a, a challenge that you have. It's almost like a catch-22 with running your own business with the same drainage place. I think what surprised me about SJP is the, the collegiate atmosphere that exists within SJP. It's not your run-of-the-mill corporate organization. It's a sort of place where uh, you come to work where people know your name and you're in a position where you don't feel like you're competing or politicking or getting your elbows out because you want to advance. Essentially, everybody here is working in a collaborative atmosphere. So whether it's the uh, number one practice or the, the practice that nobody really knows about, all of these individuals are working towards a common goal of building a practice within St. James' Place, building a lifestyle, helping uh, financial, uh, helping provide financial advice to clients to grow their business so everybody works together, which is something that uh, really surprised me about St. James's Place and still does to this day, uh, the degree of collaborative effort that exists. The one piece of advice I think I'd give to anyone looking at this, wanting to start their own business, is that it is possible. And then you could also become really successful at what, doing what it is you would like to do but you want to be in a position where you not only keep your head down, but you engage with all the resources that exist within St. James's Place. Because whether that's the academy or people like your PDM, your city location, the, the, the hand is there to help. You just have to do the asking and know what it is you'd want. I feel like I found my home. So, Prior to this, I had done so many other things where I was trying to find uh, my, my, my place in the world. And St. James's Place, for me, has provided me with that.